It's beginning to look a lot like repaints. Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag, my gal! Sunday, you kissed my wife! Baby, my heart's on fire! The 2020 COVID year brought even more Transformers exclusives than usual, as hypochondriacs across the globe cowered in their houses while submitting to your greedy, power-hungry politicians. Ruthless retailers took savage advantage of our submissive weakness and many figures were made unavailable except as specialty orders from various online outlets. Among these is the Amazon exclusive set of Earthrise Deluxe Prowl and Ironhide. I wish I could show you the box artwork, but the people at Amazon didn't even bother boxing this when they delivered it. They just slapped on the barcode stickers and dumped it on my minion's porch. Lazy bums. Prowl and Ironhide go back to Generation 1, of course, with Prowl being the logic-obsessed officer who turns into a police car, and Ironhide, the tough, grizzled veteran who turns into a red party van. The bottom of the box was pretty much one of the only surfaces that didn't get an ugly sticker on it, but the back at least does give a decent view of the figures in both modes, with the rest of the box obscured and ruined with barcodes. Let us open the box and review the figures themselves. <laughs> Out of box deluxe Prowl and Ironhide from the Autobot Alliance pack come with their instruction booklet. They also come with a cardboard map piece and see-through window thingy to reveal secrets. A white gun accessory for deluxe Prowl. A black and gunmetal gray weapon accessory for deluxe Ironhide and a topper van roof accessory for Deluxe Ironhide. The instruction manual has no stats, as is often the case with these exclusive sets. Starting with Earthrise Ironhide, it uses the Ironhide Siege Mold, but with some of the details smoothed out, and the grunge paint missing. The front portion looks a bit more like an Earth-style van with the headlights set up. The black tires are still just these plastic discs snapped onto some holding pegs, and have no highlights to set them off. You can plug accessories onto the back using these open ports, as well as jamming fire blast accessories onto the back. But note that the windshield is kind of gapish, like something's missing, and that's correct. Because these four ports on the top are meant to secure the new accessory, which is the van topper cap. Fold up the windows so that they're all out of the way. Also make sure that this peg on the bottom is pushed all the way towards the front, then line everything up with this hole on the four peg ports, and jam the van top in place, and push it down. Then flip down the windows and tab them into place, along with these other van windows on the side. Then push the windshield back into place, and Ironhide's van mode is more vanny than ever. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Haha. <laughs> Get it. Oh, oh hush. Some have whined that the red color of some of the parts is not perfectly matched to the red used for the body. Such persons either don't know or choose to forget what Universe Ironhide looked like. Blah. Universe Deluxe is like a Rubik's Cube with the stickers on diagonally. In my opinion, Earthrise Ironhide is much better. So I'm willing to forgive the color mismatching as a minor flaw. What seems more glaring to me is that these window portions are not painted either blue or silver or anything to make them look like windows, just red. He still rolls decently on flat surfaces, but now has only three open Battlemaster ports. The one port on the top of the van capper, and his two ports at the rear end. <laughs> Don't snicker, crow. Ironhide's transformation is still the same as his Siege version. Start by opening the front windshield of the van, flip out the windows at the side near the front, and then it's easy enough to pry the lid off of Ironhide's van portions. These two transparent windows don't actually clip against anything, so you can lift it off fairly easily. Flip down the front portion of the van bumper, untab the side panels, then pry open the top portions of the van, and pry both halves of the van back apart. These top panels will fold down to close up Ironhide's legs. 
take the arms and kind of fold them up just a little bit, then use this circular pivot to rotate the entire body section until it is 180 degrees inverted. It will feel a bit loose and wobbly, but don't worry. Untab the arms and pry them apart. They peg together using this peg and slot combination. But pry them apart and fold them down. Then rotate them so that these peg holes are now facing out into the side. And rotate the arms down. This will also mean that the fists are facing forward properly. Fold Ironhide's head up from the chest. Then make sure this gray portion is tabbed in. Then you can take this rear bumper section and tab it back into place. Then use these two slots on the interior of Ironhide's windshield and peg them into these tabs on the chest. Use this gray hinge to angle things. It takes a bit of fiddling, but you can get it to peg in fairly decently, and you will feel them kind of grip. In robot mode, Earthrise Ironhide is perhaps the closest cartoon accurate representation I've seen in a figure short of the Masterpiece version. There are differences, of course, but he's still light years ahead of the Universe version. The head has a nicely painted silver face, and the head has his red helmet with Generation 1 accurate crest, but it's the Van Windshield chest that really sells this one. The Siege version was okay, but this one looks more like his Van accurate body. After that, of course, his appendage limbs do an easy job of just being there and being functional. Most of the molding is the same as Siege on his limbs, but now he has black shoulders, hands and pelvis to go with the red plastic and yellow stripes. It seems to suit him well and breaks the monotony of the red and gray. Putting him in robot mode opens up more Battlemaster ports so you can arm him up. And I think I've finally found a good match for Battlemaster Smashdown. Of course, there is still his topper accessory. You can fold up the windows so that they're more or less out of the way. And then store it on Ironhide's back using this peg and hole combo. And it kind of makes him look like he is wearing a tuxedo tailcoat. You can also slide out this peg at the bottom to extend these four cannons, each of which can be used to plug in a fire blast accessory. And of course you can plug it onto his arm as either a firing cannon weapon, or plug it into his arm as a shield so that he can iron hide behind it. Pew 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 pew. So while the topper is very obtrusive, at least there are plenty of ways to make it stick out like a sore thumb. Fold up these window portions and plug in the gun accessory, and jam him onto the topper so that he can use it as a gun sled. And just, uh, try not to laugh. Oops. Ironhide's articulation remains unchanged from the Siege version. The head will rotate 360 degrees, but it's a bit stiff in its socket. The only way to make it tilt forwards and backwards is to untab this transformation hinge. Each arm will spin 360 degrees, and this hinge on the shoulder will allow it to splay outwards. It will go well over 90 degrees for some dynamic armpit action. Upper arm swivel is included, and each elbow will bend 90 degrees. The fists will spin in their mushroom pegs, and there is full waist rotation. The hips will rotate 360 degrees, or until you bump into something, whichever comes first, and also splay outwards for high step and kicks. The upper thigh rotates almost too easily, and each knee is equipped with a 90 degree bend. The feet won't tilt forwards or backwards because this is siege technology here, but each ankle will tilt in and out to support those wide angle stances we all know and love. <laughs> Moving on to Deluxe Prowl, he's dinky for a deluxe-sized figure, but so was Wheeljack. And this is a reflection of many companies scaling back on their production values, but charging more for what they do give us. Jerks. Anywho, Prowl is a slight remold of other Earthrise figures, so by reviewing this one, I'm essentially reviewing Earthrise Blue Streak and Smokescreen as well. Hat trick. He's a sporty Earth-style sedan. But this one is colored black and white like a police car. See? It says police on the sides. He's got red painted cop lights on the top of the car, and translucent plastic on the headlights and windows. The tires are again those cheap discs jammed onto these little holding clips. Pretty lazy, and no paint to set off the hubcaps. But otherwise the car is fairly well detailed, and it rolls on smooth surfaces. 
Only the tires rattle when you shake it. And in alt mode, everything pegs together well with nothing loose or floppy. You can open the car doors, but that only reveals the nothingness inside. Slot these pegs into the now visible robot arms to tab them back shut. Prowl's alt mode has only one Battlemaster port on the tippy top, where you can plug in the single gun accessory or fire blasts. You can plug a fire blast into the tip of the gun. But that's the limit of his Battlemaster compatibility, at least in this mode. Some care must be taken with the transformation others have reported with this mold with Blue Streak and with Smokescreen that the window section snaps off if you bend the transformation hinge the wrong way. Start with opening the car doors by untapping them from the sides. Underneath the car you will notice this hollow section. This is where the robot arms are hidden. Swing each of the robot arms down, then swing each of them up. You will see these internal hinges which allow this to take place. Then rotate each arm so that the car tire is facing the car door. At the top of the car is a panel that we have to kind of push through until it folds down internally. It will poke out down here at this section, more on that later. You will see Prowl's head jammed inside the car. Rotate it so that it's facing forward. The robot legs are folded very compactly into the rear section. Kind of loosen things up by prying the rear of the car apart. You will see this tab which holds it together. Then very carefully push the front section of the car wheels down until they untab from the windows. Fold them until they're facing backwards. Ease the rear windows out from under the car hood. When transforming to car mode, you have to be very careful to fold them back in and tuck them underneath the windows. Then you can fold up the rear section of the car again. Hold on to this portion below the head as a kind of brace, and don't put too much pressure on the windshield up near this hinge. Pull them out, straighten the legs, then you can finish pulling the legs apart. With the body portions thus liberated, you can give the whole thing a 180 degree twist, and then you kind of use this hinge to push Prowl's head up through this hole in the car hood, while at the same time hinging the window backwards. Again, don't put too much pressure on this hinge. Rather use this secondary hinge on the inside to angle back the windshield. And eventually you will feel those hinges collapse and push Prowl's head up through the car hood. You will know you have done it right if this white tab pegs into the black section of the body. The car hood should angle backwards nicely and lie flat against the robot back. Underneath the robot feet are these two black dimples. They are hinged so that they will fold down. These will serve as Prowl's little heel spurs. And on the inside of each shin is this teeny tiny fold down black flap that's meant to serve as a kind of cover for the emptiness inside his legs. Blah. On the inside of the body, on the torso section, you will see these tiny tabs that stick out. They are meant to be slot into these sections inside the arm. Prowl's robot mode is a strong tribute to his Generation 1 days, with modern articulation and no die-cast metal. All of him is hard plastic, though many parts are the translucent plastic painted over. This plastic tends to be weaker, and is no doubt the source of the infamous breakage issues. I found that as long as you're very careful, that can be avoided. Unlike the smokescreen figure, Prowl has no shoulder cannons. So he's got these two holes on top in both alt and robot mode to plug in accessories that don't exist. Boo! But the colors are nice and vivid in Stormtrooper black and white, and the proportions seem alright. The car door wings don't get in the way too much, and they can be angled backwards if you want. The abdomen section seems a bit thin compared to the rest of him. But I guess they had to trim it down so that they could fold all of his parts up inside that dinky little car. The middle and lower body is a bit flat in terms of the color and detailing. The underpants and thighs could have used some gold or silver paint. But the face is well sculpted and neatly painted with a distinct silver face and blue eyes. He rattles a bit in robot mode, but he's mostly pretty solid, except for the shins which are so hollow and thin they feel like eggshells. These silly flip-down plates don't do much to disguise it, but it's better than nothing, I guess. 
Turn them around and it looks like you could store a few cords of firewood back here. But the robot mode opens up more Fire Blast and Battlemaster ports that you can use to hyper-equip Prowl with more weapons or shields, and maybe overcome some of the inferiority complex he must have because he's so short. For an Earthrise Deluxe, Prowl's articulation is fairly standard. The head feels a bit stiff, but it will rotate 360 degrees, and also tilt back and forward a little. Each shoulder will rotate 360 degrees or until you slam into the car doors. And this hinge up the top of the shoulder allows it to splay outward. The upper arm swivel will rotate 360 degrees. Each elbow will bend slightly over 90 degrees. And each fist will spin 360 degrees in its mushroom pig. You wouldn't guess by looking, but he does have 360 degree waist rotation. The legs would rotate backwards all the way. Except that this hinge kind of bumps into the abs and prevents the backward motion. But the forward motion works pretty good. And the secondary hinge on the inside of the pelvis means that he can kick his feet outwards. The upper thigh swivel will rotate 360 degrees. Each knee will bend freely backwards because there's nothing back here to inhibit the motion. And each ankle will also tilt outwards. So with patience and care, you can get a decent amount of articulation out of Prowl as long as you don't mind making a few compromises here and there. For size comparison, here are Deluxe Earthrise, Ironhide, and Prowl. Next to Transformers Animated Deluxe Ironhide and Prowl. Here are Deluxe Earthrise, Ironhide and Prowl. Next to Walgreens exclusive Deluxe Siege Ratchet. Here is Earthrise Deluxe Prowl and Ironhide. Next to Combiner Wars guest dot Optimus Maximus. And here are Earthrise Deluxe Prowl and Ironhide. Next to a bunch of mixed nuts. Where art imitates reality. <laughs> For me, the main draw of the Autobot Alliance exclusive Amazon set was to get a solid, decent Generation 1 style Ironhide. I liked Siege Ironhide. This Earthrise version is a better replacement. And if you haven't gotten Smokescreen or Blue Streak yet, then having an Earthrise Prowl tossed in could be considered an added bonus. A bonus that they will charge you full price for. Positives for Ironhide is a solid alt mode with the new topper which fixes a lot of the stuff with the Siege version. The colors have some patchiness between sections but looks good for the most part, with everything tabbing together well. The robot mode is just as poseable as the Siege version, with lots of Battlemaster compatibility and a much more Generation 1 style appearance. Negatives are that he has few Battlemaster ports in his alt mode, and while the topper stores perfectly in alt mode, it's very cumbersome everywhere else. Plus, nobody is going to take it seriously as a sled. The windshield doesn't peg in easily in robot mode, the waist feels a bit loose, and the feet are still just kind of jutting out of the alt mode. But with the additional mass, this feels more like a deluxe than most deluxes they've made this year. And I give Earthrise Ironhide 8 out of 10 deaths. As for Prowl, he feels smaller than a deluxe should be, much as Wheeljack did. So it feels like you're getting less than what you paid for. Positives are that his alt mode is nice and compact, and makes a convincing Generation 1 style police car. There's good detailing, clean paintwork, the robot mode has good articulation with Battlemaster compatibility, and the transformation is effective without being too complicated. Negatives are that Prowl is very small. The alt mode has a hollow gap under the hood, and El Cheapo tires with no paint applications. The car has only one Battlemaster port, and they chintzed on Prowl by not giving him shoulder cannon accessories. And maybe I'm paranoid because of what I've heard from others, but I don't want to transform him much for fear of breaking the windshield portions. The robot mode suffers from severe hollow shins, and most of the painted translucent plastic sections feel rather brittle. Folding the legs properly into the car trunk is a bit of a chore, as well as getting them back out. There's a kind of phoned-in feel about Prowl, and I give him 6 out of 10 deaths. If sold as separate deluxes, each would have been $19.99 for a total of about $40. Your chances now to get this set for that price are pretty slim, given recent shortages. But hey, I'm sure your mortal governments will give up on tyranny in 2021. 
Then they'll reopen your economies, and the supply will shoot right back up. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell the boy, and tell me I'm your own. Thank you.